Hi, this is Dion Watts of Watts Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai in Simi Valley. Um, I'm going to go over another variation to my Watts choke. Um, it's basically a baseball choke, um, but it's just I, I take it to different levels and, and I have a lot of variations on it, so a lot of people just associate it with me that follow my moves. Um, I'm going to kind of break down how I do it just real quickly because I already described it in all the other videos, so if you want to check those out, that's fine. But just, it's like you're holding a baseball bat. Okay, four fingers in, okay, thumb in, nice and tight. This is basically how your grip should be. I don't like any space here. You're gonna naturally have a little bit of space as you roll, but originally start this way, because if you start like this and then you get more space, it's not gonna be that good. Um, I like to go pretty much right behind his neck. I don't like to be too much on the side. And the hand with the four fingers in, that's the main one that has to be tight to his chest. You don't want his arm inside. The other one doesn't matter as much. You can still get it, okay? Um, but here, and then I'm going to spin under north-south. That, and that's usually where I can finish it. Um, one thing I do big uh, different is I like to go to my stomach eventually. All right? I loosened it up um, for him just now, but uh, it's pretty quick at that point. Um, this is just a variation I've been doing a lot in class, and, and I like it. Uh, it depends what kind of fighter you're going against and how their style is. But what I'm going to get is kind of like double hooks under the same knee. So hooks, kind of a butterfly, but I'm with one knee, so stand up here. So just, just to give you an idea what I'm doing, it's going to be to this leg, but so you can see, I will eventually be just hooking the knee with both my ankles and keeping tension on it, all right? When I do it, my setup, I'm going to have his lapel and the sleeve, and I'm going to keep that kind of tension, okay? so that I can keep throwing him, making him posture. That way he doesn't defend when I set up the choke. So, a nice way I like to start in the beginning, kind of typical, we do the hand smack, okay? I sit down like this, okay? A lot of people do this. I feel really comfortable, my hand's ready. I'm looking to grab his sleeve, okay? If I can't get the sleeve, then I'll transition to this, but for now, I usually can get it. As Soon as I have the sleeve, I'm going to shoot in and try to hook with two hooks behind his knees and grab his lapel, okay? Now it's up to him. I mean, he, I could probably sweep him if he doesn't do much, but he's probably going to want to fight this and maybe even start to stand up. So as he goes, I keep my hooks, keep him dancing around, keep his knees, okay? Don't let him get out. But what will happen sometimes is they'll, he can't really go to this side without being swept because I have his arm here. He won't feel comfortable, but since he has a free hand here, he's going to try to stuff my knee and come around this way. When he does, I'm just going to transition to the other knee, all right? And I feel pretty good this way. I still, he might think he's on his way to being inside control, but I have really good grip here and here, and I probably can check his balance and throw him that way. But instead of this, I'm going to kind of transition and start checking his balance this way so that he's forced to posture this hand. Okay, so I have a good grip here, and I'm going to start going this way. If he doesn't put that hand, he's going to go. Always tension with these ankles. Don't let him step over and get out. It's not that hard to keep tension when you're already holding this as it is. Okay, so from here, I mean, people probably can transition to their own deep half guard or something, but I feel comfortable with this. So now, when, I, when I'm sitting here checking the balance, I'm going to switch from here inside to his collar for my choke, okay? Same thing, I still have the same thing. I have to keep, you know, anytime he starts trying to defend my choke and fishing his hand in, I'll throw him that way, I'll check his balance again, and if he leaves it here, he'll fall over, so he'll have to take it out, or he'll go. On one of the times when he's over, I'll sink in my thumb and set up the choke. I still have both my ankles here, okay? Now, make sure my forearm's in, make sure I feel comfortable, I can, once in a while, choke somebody right here. I don't even need to do anything. It, it's not as good, but, I mean, if I just sit here and start cinching it, I might get him, but I'm not going to rely on that. I have my ankles behind his knee. I have this set in. I know he's posturing. So now what I'm going to do is throw him a lot harder this way so I can get my ankles out from under his knee and I can spin underneath him. As I spin underneath, the only thing you got to watch, sometimes as he lands, this knee could hit you in the head. Um, it won't stop you from choking him, it's just it's no fun, obviously. But that's just the price of the move sometimes. 
Uh, it doesn't always happen, it just depends how he lands. So I'm here, checking his balance with his knee here, keep his balance, and then on the next, next one I'm going to throw, so throw, spin under, finish the choke. Okay, finish the choke here, or like I like to do, eventually go to your stomach. You know, whenever he, he, whenever he taps, it's obviously uh, done, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I like that variation a lot. So anyways, um, this is my partner Peter. Thank you, Peter. And I uh, hope these moves are helping people. Thank you very much.